Hi guys, we're back. It is 1.34, so we're a little early, so we'll give everyone a few seconds to come on. Um, so again, April and Amy, uh, we just got done with our tour of the greenhouse. I thought it went pretty well. Again, we apologize for any wobbleness with the camera. But or hopefully. audio issues. Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk louder next time if we do this again. Um, but also, just to let you guys know, we did have a question that didn't get answered last time, and I believe it was Chris Mickelson said, my daughter is a sophomore and they tried doing aquaponics in plant science class and their fish kept dying. Um, what is the temp they're supposed to be at to keep them alive? Um, so Chris, that's kind of a complicated question. It depends on the fish. Um, so in our paw aquaponics, we use tilapia. It's a tropical fish. So we have to keep our temperature above about 70 degrees. But depending on what fish, if they have bluegill, if they have pike, if they have trout, that temperature is going to vary, but it may also not be the temperature. Um, there could be as simple as if the water's not oxygenated enough. Um, it could also be over time if there's not enough bacteria present to break down that fish poop, which creates ammonia. Um, that ammonia can actually kill the fish. It can, break, it can build up too much into the system. So sometimes you have to let that system run without the fish to let that bacteria population build up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things that it could be. But if you have, if anyone has any questions or would like to hear more information or get in contact for more information, um, you guys can always give us a call at 701-228-5605. That's my phone number. Or you can email us at amy.koehler, amy.poehler, at dakotacollege.edu. Um, and then also on our Facebook page as well, um, we, we can always ask questions and try to get in contact with us as well. We do the messaging. We tend to update it yeah. and, and get back to people when they ask questions as much as often. So if you have any future questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, and then once all of this seclusion ends, um, please feel free to come on to, our, to the campus and see the greenhouse. And if, if you guys would like us to do a video on something else specifically, maybe shoot us some ideas too. We're willing to do that. I know everyone's trapped in their homes right now. And um, we're happy to educate. Yep. So what are we doing here today? Amy? Yeah, so we'll get started. So I'm just gonna learn some of the people. I'm hoping we have some kids out there. So if there's any kids out there or parents with their kids, send us a wave or let us know because we're gonna gear this project towards our younger people who are stuck at home right now and might need some educational entertainment. Um, and hopefully this is something either you can join along while we're doing it right now or easily find the materials either at home or really quick brief trip to the grocery store. Um, so what you really need for this project, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do some cloning of succulents. And remember we talked about succulents. Succulents are any type of plant that has um, a way to store water um, in a certain type of organ. That could be its leaves, that could be its roots, or that could even be its trunk. Um, so a lot of times they'll have really waxy, thick leaves, or they'll and they'll have really, you guys can see here, really thick, succulent, um, well, it's not a good example. Here we go. Here's a good example. This lovely jade plant has really thick trunks that are, if you open this up, looks really wet inside. It's not very woody. Um, so those are all different types, parts of the plant that allows it to store water for when times in its environment where there just won't be enough for them to survive any other way. Um, so they do really well in deserts, um, they do really well in arid climates, which is areas that don't get a lot of water. It doesn't actually have to just be a desert where you think of like Sahara. It could be in the tropical rainforest. Some of those air plants come from tropical rainforests, and they're considered succulents because even though they're in a rainforest, they're, you know, they're on little bits and pieces of wood or attached to trunks where maybe they're not getting as much rain because everything else is keeping that rain away. And then they have other periods of time where they get lots of moisture. So they're also succulents as well. But we're going to do, the great thing about succulents is they're one of the easiest plants to propagate or clone, to make new babies out of a mother plant. Um, so what you'll need, you guys, for this project, and there are some things you can change around a little bit, but while we're going to do it, um, is really simple, some empty egg trays. Two to three is probably going to be enough. Um, you'll need a water bottle. This is the best way to water your succulents, especially when we're trying to get them to root. Um, because again, the one thing that's going to kill your succulent is overwatering. That's you're not hardly ever going to kill it from underwatering, but you will over if you water it too much, you'll kill it really quick. Um, and then some pruning shears or, or scissors. 
to, you know, cut or break off some leaves or things like that. Paper towels, always nice clean up messes, a place to set your containers on. Um, and then last but not least, your succulent. So it can literally be any kind of foliage succulent out there. Um, there's a lots of different types. Uh, it could be the succulents that you brought in from your porch this summer that are getting really leggy and long and stretched. Or I know right now Walmart is actually selling these succulents and then local floral shops before they close. If you're in an area they've already closed, um, Walmart might be a good choice. But, you know, try to visit your local. Quickly, this, I'm sure you can call and do pickups as well to try to get a hold of some succulents. But a lot of people already have those at home. A really good example of a succulent you might already have at home or, or a parent or something like that would be the Christmas cactus. This Everybody's lovely guy right has here. a Christmas yeah, cactus. Yeah, everyone's grandma has, which don't go to your grandma if you're sick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but every grandma has a Christmas cactus. It's a really common plant found in houses. And this is a one, it's technically a succulent and it does propagate really easy or clone. Um, so there's some examples of things you can use like these. So how we're gonna start out is we're gonna show a couple different ways how you can transplant and clone and make new plants out of your original succulent. So what we're going to have eventually is something that looks like this, where we have, we're gonna try to get these different leaves right here to, um, to uh, root in the soil. Um, we're also going to do some cuttings, taking those really ugly, leggy uh, succulents that might have gotten too tall, kind of like this guy right here. We want to make them nice and short and pretty again because he apparently didn't get enough light and started growing weird. Um, so you can cut those and cut those down and get them to re-root into the shape and form that you guys would want. Um, and is there any member of clone kids? is anything where you take a mother parent and you make exact replica out of that mother. So by us taking a leaf, off of one of these succulents and I get this leaf to root and then make a whole new plant out of this leaf. This plant that comes from this leaf is going to be completely identical to this plant here genetically and that's a clone. When two things um, genetically match exactly and this is a natural way it happens in nature all the time. Yep an animal might walk by and brush up against a plant a leaf might fall off and that leaf that's how it propagates itself. It will grow roots into a whole new plant. Yep, that's, that's how it goes. So like I said, we want to try to keep, oh, and the last thing you'll need for this is some type of potting soil. Uh, preferably, you're going to want a cactus or a succulent uh, potting soil because it drains really well. It doesn't hold on to moisture. Um, but your regular potting soil will work just fine that you might already have in your shed or things like that. It's just that you might be able to be a little more careful making sure that you don't overwater. Whereas this stuff, it's got a lot of, ours has a lot of sand in it, so that water just goes right through and we don't have to worry about overwatering. So that's a lot of everything you'll probably need for this project. So we'll get started with this guy right here. So you have at home, we're gonna take this plant here and we're going to make multiple, we're going to transplant it. So we're gonna make the top part of this plant, the mother part of this plant, we're gonna cut it and get it to root so that um, it can be transplanted into a new container and it looks prettier. And then all the leaves we have to, we have to remove from here, we're going to utilize and try to get new plants off those leaves. So the first thing you're going to do is take your plant or your succulent. Um, it could be, you can do the same thing with something small like this, or you could be using something really large like this guy right here. It's the same way. The same way I would do with this doesn't have to be this particular type. Um, any type of foliage plant where the leaves, uh, succulent foliage plant where the leaves come off easily. So you're going to take your mother plant like this. And the easiest thing to do, you don't have to dig it up. You don't have to pull it out of the soil is take it and clip it right here. See? right there at the edge of the top of the soil scissors or something like that and then you're gonna have something like this as you can see here um, this thing is just really weirdly shaped and what I really want to save is this pretty you know pretty top part right here um, that I'm gonna transplant and all this weirdly shaped stem that's going on right here I want to get rid of um, so the really easy way to do this oh also side note um, succulents that have, that's a good example. So this guy right here, you'll notice that's kind of a, a white, almost pasty substance on the top of it. Um, that's a way for the leaves to help protect them to lose much water from sunlight. Uh, and if you smudge that, it won't grow back. So when you're working with succulents, you want to try to hold on or work with the bottom of the plant as much as possible so that you're not smudging 
the rest of the plant to keep it kind of looking really pretty. So the first thing we're going to do is all these leaves, probably from here down, we really don't need. Um, so we're just going to start pulling them off. Um, they come off really easily. You want to try to get as much as that bottom, you can see that, that bottom little uh, ledge off of it as possible. Yep. I kind of like to wiggle them back and forth gently, yep. like a loose tooth. Until so they we're going to take them off. Set them down on our paper towel. And every leaf we pull off potentially could be a new plant. That's the cool part about it. And we'll show you guys what you can do with them when we're done with our mother plant here. And that's the one that we're gonna, the original plant. All right, just keep going, keep going. It's kind of fun. <laughs> All right, if anyone has any questions or are going too fast, let us know as well. All right, so now I have this really weird long stem. And I might want to also, you'll notice, I don't know if you guys can kind of see it on this guy. Right there, you'll see there's a little bit of ugliness on this plant. There's a little bit of like um, burnt parts. So any ugly leaves or leaves that are broken, you might as well take them off because, you know, they're not going to look pretty again. And they'll this plant will grow. Um, so I'm going to actually, actually, I'm, back, I'm left with something like this. So every spot we took a leaf off, potentially can be a new, it's a new growth point where roots can grow off of. That's the cool thing about succulents. Um, so one thing we know is we don't want to plant eventually something this long. If the roots are down here and we want the plant sitting nice at the, the soil level, we don't want that huge, that huge long snip. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut them. Usually you want about half an inch from the top base of the plant. And you're just going to snip it like that. And your last case thing you have is this lovely little guy here. And then there's two ways you guys can transplant this guy. First way is you can just take an empty eggplant and you can egg carton, egg carton, <laughs> eggplant, sorry. And you can just set this guy up in the plant where the roots are kind of hanging out, then the bottom's kind of hanging, um, something like this. And just kind of set it and then just fill this up with as many succulents as you have. Um, and you can literally just set it in a, in a sunny, but not like maybe right next to the window spot. And in about two to three weeks, you're going to have something that looks like this. So you see this is one of the ones, the big one we cut uh, probably about two or three weeks ago. And a couple of the edge bottom leaves did start to die. They're losing some of their moisture. But you'll notice, look where we cut the plant. There's roots. We have roots growing at the bottom of that. So now... Now that this plant has roots, it can take up moisture and nutrients. So all I have to do is take a pot like this or any container I want to do it in, and I can just plant it in the pot, stick it right in there, water it, and we have a whole new potted plant. And we never had to lose it, and we didn't have to mess with this big, ugly stem. And it's no now eventually some of these roots will, will die, it'll look prettier, and we'll have a whole new, nice, beautiful plant. Um, another way, this is called air rooting. Um, another way is you can just bypass the, the air altogether, and if you want to just transplant them right away, you can do that too. So you take your, your tray like this and your soil or a little container. It could be in the tray here. It could be in a little container. Um, or where's my six-pack? I have a six-pack. You a little six-pack. I filled it in. I think so. Sorry guys. What are you looking for? Well, I had, I had a, no, I had, oh, here we go. Here's my little six pack. Wow. Sorry guys. You can, you know, you can find these little six packs um, at most of your grower stores, um, your garden centers, and maybe you have some, mom has some left over in her garden shed from when she bought some petunias. Um, or you can just use a plastic cup and you fill that pack full of soil and then you take your rooted, take your plant that you just freshly cut, just like this guy right here. We take off the both bottom leaves. Make sure you take off those bottom leaves. And we just stuck it right here in the soil. All these, you know, they all were just stuck right there into the soil. And then you let that plant in that soil sit without watering for about two or three weeks. After those two or three weeks, you can start uh, taking a water bottle and just kind of give it a spritz once a day or so. And then those plants will root on their own, just like these guys right here did in the air. Um, and then you have these nice little plants. And after maybe two or three weeks, if you want to put them in a new container or put them in, you know, a really nice bowl or something like that, once they have roots, you totally can. So you don't have to just do, you can either root them like this, just in air, so you can see those roots growing. 
or you can just stick them in soil and wait a couple weeks before you water and you'll most likely almost every single one of these succulents will put on roots and you won't lose any of them so that's always really fun um, and that's what you can do with your mother plant but next fun part we took our mother plant we made it beautiful now what do we do with all of these lovely leaves that we took off of there? Well, these guys all have the potential to be an adult. So all you got to do is take another one of your egg trays, fill all the slots with soil, something like that. See, there are those, not need a lot of soil, um, hardly needs any at all. And you take these, you take your leaves and you just stick them right there on the top. You don't stick them down deep in the soil, you almost just lay them there. Um, and you can kind of see right here, oh, let's go this way, you can kind of see right there, I just kind of stuck them there on the soil, um, and I laid them out, and you're going to get something that looks kind of like this, depending on how many leaves you have, um, and I did both sides, you can either stick them kind of in the soil, or you can just cover a shallow area, and literally just lay them on top of the soil. I'll show you some examples, so this was a leaf that, can you see? Yep. This was a leaf that we had stuck on top of some soil a few months ago and you can see it's developed a root system and, it's got and a new plants. little baby plant. And Here's then a cactus leaf. prickly pear cactus, same thing, it's put out a root in a little baby. And this is one that they literally just sat on top of the soil, I didn't even have to stick it in the soil. Another yeah. leaf Here's that another sat. one, this is from a jade plant and you can see it's developed a pretty good root system. And once they have roots like that, you can then take them in your little six pack here or in your little spots and you can just actually bury them in the soil. And once you see those roots on those leaves, that's when you start watering. And again, just a simple water bottle is the best way. You want that soil to dry out completely every time you, before every time you water. So just giving them a spritz like this, um, once they start to root, remember you don't want to water, they can't, if you water them before they root, the water is not going to do anything. These guys need roots to take up water. Um, so if you're just adding water, you're just giving them cause for rock. They can rock. So you just give them a spray like this. And honestly, if you have succulents at home and you're really worried about overwatering, this is the best way to water. Just take this, take your, you know, get the top portion nice and saturated once a week or depending on once you want that. You want to stick your pinky down in there and hardly feel any moisture, if none at all, before you water this guy again. And like I said, it'll take six months to a year to kill a succulent from underwatering. It'll take a week to two weeks to kill a succulent with overwatering. So it's always better to, on the side of caution, until you get the hang of succulents. Um, besides that, they're really easy to grow. They're hard to kill unless you overwater. I would say it's healthiest for them to water once a week or every other week. Depending on how much sunlight or how warm it is yeah. that they're out. And out. generally succulents like more sun too. Yeah, that's, that's not always true, but most succulents do need a, a full sun window if you have a south-facing window. But yeah, then that's, is there any questions? It's kind of our project. So at the end of the day, hopefully you'll have something that looks like that if you choose to do the soil succulent propagation. Um, you know, think, you know, where it just sits there and then you can take your finished products your mother plants and you can have them just sitting in your container and again once those have roots you can transplant them just like any other plant just put you literally stick them in some soil some potting soil is always best or outdoor soil is going to be too compact and you always risk disease you're always best when you're working with house plants and succulents and foliage and plants with leaves that you have in a house you always want to try to buy or get some potting soil from the store or your garden center um, but yeah, so that's, and if anyone has any questions, we'll post this, po we'll post this live so anyone can follow it with their kids and try to do it with themselves. Um, and hopefully we had some, I don't know if we did, but hopefully we had some kids joining us. Um, it's a great learning activity. And again, like April said, if anyone can think of any kind of little science plant related classes, they'd like us to try to cover like seed propagate, like seed starting, um, gardening, um, we can talk about photosynthesis. All that kind of stuff we do. We're going to try to do these once a week until school start again, uh, schools open up again, hopefully, or until the end of the year. Oh, thank you so much. Is it Luana? Luana? Luan. Oh, Luan. Thank you so much, Luan. I'm happy you guys learned something. Um, and like I said, just ask if you have any questions, um, you can post here on the page or you know, on the live page, or you can also post 
um, message us on the DCD Horticulture page and we're always here to ask questions and hopefully, like I said, when this place opens up again in a few months and all of this, we can actually see people. Um, Come on down and visit us. And we will have succulents available. Also. Yes, we sell those as well. So. Okay, thank you, All everybody. Right, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.